Hey everybody, this is Troy with eBuzz Central. Today we're going to take a look at Garuda Linux Harpy Eagle Dragonized. It's the newest version of Garuda, and if we take a look at something here, we're running the most up-to-date version of KDE Plasma, which is 5.23.2, KDE Frameworks 5.87, and we're running the 5.14.14 Zen 1 Zen 64-bit kernel. So we're going to close out of that. And before we get started, please don't forget to like, subscribe, or follow my channel. Doesn't cost anything, and if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like the channel and the videos that we do, you can buy us a cup of coffee, or better yet, become a patron to the channel over on Patreon. And if you don't want to go all the way over to Patreon to support the channel, we now have memberships. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to zip on over to Garuda's website, and you will notice when you open up the web browser, it is called Fire Dragon. And it's going to have a little different look than most web browsers that you're used to. They've got services right here. You've got Seer X, which is a privacy-respecting meta search engine. Then you've got Google, which is a privacy-respecting Google search engine. Then you've got Garuda Cloud, Bitwarden. Then you do have more services over here, Uptime Monitoring, Private Bin, CryptPad. You've got the Garuda Forum right here. Should you have any issues and you need to get answers, you can get to the forum from right there. Then you can also reach them on Telegram, Twitter, and Matrix using Element, and that is bridged to Telegram. Then you've got their homepage, GitLab, Garuda Wiki, Arch Wiki, Frequently Asked Questions, Chaotic AUR, which is the Arch user repository that Garuda uses, and then, of course, About Us. So let's go ahead and zip on over to their webpage, and the link to that is garudalinux.org. I will be sure to include that in the description below. And when you first come to their webpage, You've got a lot to look at here. It's a very full-featured website. They've got easy installation instructions. They've got BTRFS in the default system that you can go over. Then you've got Garuda Assistant, Chaotic AUR. There's just a lot of information you can get based on their home screen. Now, they've got up top, Downloads, Forum, About, Donate, and Services. If you go over to Download, it gives you minimum system requirements. It gets you the installation procedure, gives you recommendations for dual booting, live session login details, Garuda Downloader. If you want to get that for Windows, you can. Then you have the different flavors of Garuda. You've got the KDE Dragonized version. You can also get the Dragonized Gaming Edition, and you can get the Dragonized Black Arch Edition. You can also get XFCE, GNOME, Garuda LXQT, Garuda Wayfire, Garuda Qtile, Garuda B-Spawn, and then you can get Garuda i3WM and Garuda Sway. So there's many different flavors of Garuda to try. Whatever might be your favorite, you can zip on over, download it, and then you can go from there. We're going to go ahead and close out of the web browser now. And when you download Garuda, throw it on a USB or open it up in a virtual machine. You're met with Garuda Welcome. Right off the bat, you've got Garuda Assistant. If you click on it, it opens up this nice Garuda Assistant screen where you can do a system update. You can refresh your mirror list. You can refresh your key rings, remove orphan files. If you're not familiar with orphan files, if you've run software on your system and you've ended up deleting that software, sometimes there will be trace files that are left. You can come over here and it'll remove them and it's safe. Remove database lock, reinstall all packages, edit repositories, clear package cache or clear all caches. And then you can also come down here if you've done configuration changes, you can reset them right here with a click of a button. Let's say you want to reset all of your configs and start over. Just click on that and then you can reset selected figs right here and it will overwrite your customizations. Then you've got your BTRFS, ButterFS or BetterFS settings. You can go over here and do the BTRFS trim enabled. If you're not familiar with BTRFS trim, it's something that you use if you have an SSD. It actually helps utilize your SSD much better and it extends the life of your SSD. Then you have BTRFS Balance, BTRFS Defrag, BTRFS Scrub. Then you've got Snapper Boot, Snapper Cleanup, and Snapper Timeline. What Snapper is is another way to back up your operating system. Kind of like Time Shift. You can choose either one and use that to back up your system. It just takes a nice snapshot of your system, so if you should have any problems in the future, you can go back over to Snapper or Time Shift, refresh your system from a previous time when there were no problems. And there's your Snapper. You can do everything right here in Garuda Assistant for Snapper. You can take a new snapshot. When you do, it'll take a snapshot of your system and save it. System components. Right now, it lets you know that 
Out of the box, Garuda uses pipe wire as opposed to pulse audio. And then your network manager, firewall, printing and scanning. You can come down here and check any of these that you want to use and then update your system and apply. Settings goes over your default shell. And then down here, performance tweaks. You can adjust these to make your system run smoother and make it run faster. Then you do have power save tweaks as well. And then right click emulation. You can do some things there to change the way you use your system. System specs. This just gives you a nice readout of all the specs on your system and then other diagnostics. We're going to go ahead and close out of that. Then you've got Garuda Settings Manager. If you come over here, you've got hardware configuration, kernel, language packs, user accounts, locale settings. If you go to hardware configuration, right now it's letting you know your video is running in virtual machine. This is where you'd come if you have an NVIDIA graphics card. You can come over here and install the NVIDIA driver for it. It would be listed up here under display controllers. All you'd have to do is right click on it. It'll give you an install prompt, install it, and then you'll be good to go. Back to all settings and then kernel. Right here, it shows what we looked at a while ago. You're running the Linux Zen kernel 5.14.14. You can also here, when there's a new kernel available, come over here and install it from this area right here. So let's go back and we will close. Then you've got Garuda Gamer. Garuda Gamer is pretty interesting. Let's move that to the center of the screen. Let's go ahead and maximize it. Right here, you can install launchers with the click of a button. Let's say you wanted to get Steam. Uh, you wanted to get Heroic Games, Play on Linux, Lutris, Game Hub. You just go through here and pick what you want. What's, you want Wine and Wine Tricks, Proton, Proton Tricks. You just go through here, select everything that you want. Once you have everything selected, you just come down here, click on Apply, and it will install all the stuff that you have selected. Then you can do some gaming on Linux. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. Then you've got Garuda Network Assistant, Garuda Boot Options, Garuda Boot Repair. Should you have problems with your boot, you can come over here, get into the Garuda Boot Repair, and you can reinstall Grub, Repair Grub, Backup MBR or PBR, Restore MBR or PBR from Backup. So this right here helps you should you have any problems with boot up. So let's go ahead and close out of that. Then down here, you've got Partition Manager, Add and Remove Software. Let's go ahead and look at that. The database is missing for Pac-Man, but... This is Octopi. This is where you'd come over here. Once it's refreshed and the database was in place, you could come over here and find and do a search. Search for whatever application you want to install. Once it's found, come down here, click on it to install. And then this little check mark right here will turn green. You would click on the check mark and then it would install that application or software for you. So we'll go ahead and close out of that. Then you've got System Cleaner, Quick Access, Restore a Snapshot. Like I said earlier, if you've had problems and you need to restore from a previous snapshot, all you do is click here. It'll open up a window that's got different snapshots that you have taken. Take the most recent one where your system was working with no issues. Click on it, and it'll restore your system to that point. And then chroot, and then install Garuda Linux. So let's go ahead and close out of that. Now we're at the desktop. If you right-click on the desktop, you've got Configure Desktop and Wallpaper. Let's go ahead and take a peek at that real quick. If you go to Wallpaper... Let's move that in the center. Maximize. Over here, you've got a few different wallpapers you can choose from. You've got the one that comes with KDE 5.23. Then you've got some Garuda ones up here. And then down here, you have some different looking ones as well. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try this one right here and apply it. Then we'll go ahead and close. And there is our wallpaper. I'm going to leave that one up. I kind of enjoy that one. You can access your applications up here on the top panel. And you've got a dock down here. Up on your top panel, you've got your user, time, internet, USB, battery level, sound, and of course, your network traffic right here. You can right-click on that panel if you want to change the layout. You can configure your Latte dock. You could quit Latte if you wanted to. You can add a dock, add widgets. If you wanted to add a widget, just click on Add Widgets, and it'll give you some popular widgets over here that are already installed. You could scroll down, find something you wanted. Go ahead and put it on the panel or put it on your desktop. Now, if there's a widget you want that's not listed in here, all you got to do is get new widgets. Once you open Get New Widgets, it'll give you the option to download new Plasma widgets or install widget from a local file. So that way, if you've downloaded it somewhere on the Internet, you can just install right there, zip over to that file, and you're good to go. So we're going to go ahead and close out of that. Down on the dock, you have your Garuda Welcome right here that we just had up and we're looking at. You've got console. Let's go ahead and open up the console. 
and that gives you some nice information right there. What I'm gonna do is see if they have HTOP installed out of the box, and they do. So at present, I have three gigabytes of RAM issued to this virtual machine. I am presently using 1.2 gigabytes of RAM at rest with just the console open. That is a little heavy, of course, but it's still about 1.5 gigs lighter than Windows 11. I always have to throw that in there. I have issued it to CPUs. We're running about 50% on those CPUs, so I'm gonna go ahead and close out of that. Come down here, that's Fire Dragon. We've already taken a look at that. And then Dolphin, let's go ahead and take a peek at Dolphin. And Dolphin's a pretty full featured file manager. You do have quite a few things listed over here. Now, if there are things over here that you don't want listed, let's say like recents, I never use my recent, so I'm gonna go ahead and hide it. Search for documents, images, audio, or videos. I don't need that listed here when I've got my global search right here, so I'm gonna go ahead and right click and hide that as well. And I do wanna make these a little bigger, so what I'll do is come in this open area, right click on it, Go to icon size. Let's go ahead and make those large. That's a little better for me. Now you've got your usual suspects over here. You've got your regular home folders right here. You've got your global menu right here. And then over here, if you want to split, you can split. And then you'll have your home folders here and here. So that way, if you've downloaded a lot of documents or files and you need to move them, you can do that easily just by opening downloads and then start moving files to where you need them. So I'm going to go ahead and close the split. But that's Dolphin File Manager. It's quick, light, helps you get your work done and stays out of your way. So we'll go ahead and close out of that. Then you've got Kate, which is your text editor. Then you've got System Settings. And on your System Settings, you have quite a bit to choose from. When you open it up, you've got light theme or dark theme where you're presently in the dark. Clicking on files opens them, which means single click opens files. I'm going to go ahead and flip that over to single click selects them and then double click opens. That's what I'm most used to and that's what I want to leave it at. So I'm going to go down here, click apply, and it's now set for double click. You can come over to appearance. If you like the way Garuda looks, you don't really have to do much over here. Right now we're on Sweetified Plasma. You've got Sweet, Breeze Twilight, Breeze Dark, Breeze. You could come down here if you wanted to and get new global themes. Go to Recent, switch that over to Show Highest Rated, and then, of course, you're going to get the highest rated right here. Just pick one. You want it. Click Install. It'll download. Once it's downloaded, you close. Come over here and select it. Like, let's select Suite and Apply, and it'll change the theme across your system. Then, of course, you can change your application style, plasma style, color, windows decorations. That's just how customizable everything truly is. So what I am going to do is let you know that you can do that with cursors, font management, splash screen. We can go back over here. You can adjust workspace appearance, behavior, management, startup shutdown, user feedback, power management. We've already looked at about this system. You do have KDE Connect as well. That's going to be for your Android phone. And shortly on iOS, you'll be able to do the same thing. You can come in here, set your phone up. What you got to do is go over to the app store that you use, whether it be Google Play or iTunes. Download the KDE Connect app, put it on your phone. Once you have it installed on your phone, you can sync it with your PC or laptop. It gives you so many different things you can do with your phone to your PC. Everything from checking messages, using your phone as a remote, using your phone as a mouse. Definitely check out KDE Connect on your smartphone. It will be worth it, I promise you. I'm going to go ahead and close out of this. Now we're going to come up here and look at some of the applications. You've got development, icon browser, QT assistant, graphics. You've got ocular, internet, fire dragon, KDE connect, multimedia, MPV media player, office. You've got ocular. So if you do need an office suite, you'll have to download something like LibreOffice, only office, something like that. And then settings, you've got advanced network configuration, Garuda settings manager, K Vanta Manager, Yad Settings, you've got Alacrity, Dolphin we've looked at, Fish, Info Center, KDE Partition Manager, Octopi, System Monitor, Wi-Fi Hotspot, and then Utilities, Arc, Spectacle for your screenshots, and then Power, Shutdown, Restart, all that good stuff right there. So that's pretty much a quick look at Garuda Linux Dragon Eyes, the KDE version. It's a lot quicker than it used to be. I remember doing a, a review on this six to nine months ago, and it was really slow, laggy, but it seems like they're getting it honed down to where it's running a little bit lighter. You're only using 1.2 gigs now as opposed to the 1.7 they used to use in virtual. Now, you do have to take into account when you're watching this video, you saw that it was 1.2 gigs. you got to understand that some of this operating system is running in RAM. So when you actually install it on bare bones or you install it on hardware, you're definitely going to be running lighter than what I am in virtual machine. So what do you think? 
Is it something you might download, throw in USB, put in a virtual machine, and take for a test drive? Let me know in the comments below. Do me a favor before you leave today. Please like, subscribe, or follow my channel. It doesn't cost anything, and if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like what the channel's doing and you enjoy the videos, you can support us by buying us a cup of coffee or becoming a patron to the channel over on Patreon. And, as of yesterday, you can actually become a member to the channel, so go over and check out our membership levels. Thank you for watching the video, and I will see you in the next video.